This is our topic six cycle two video. We're looking at sound waves. Um, how you're hearing me right now. So we perceive pressure changes in the air with our ears as sound, which is a longitudinal wave. So remember, a longitudinal wave of pressure differences. Uh, so it's thinking about the slinky on the bottom here that moves back and forth with the compressions representing different sound waves and expansions. Compressions and expansions representing different sound waves and how frequently they occur. Uh, and obviously looking at them happening much more frequently than we're seeing here in this example where there's a lot of uh, compressions of air and expansions in a much smaller area. Um, so don't confuse it with a transverse wave like one you'd see in an ocean wave where the, where the energy is moving perpendicular to the oscillation. In this case the oscillation is in the same direction as the energy propagation. That means I'm speaking towards you. The pressure variations are forward and back toward you and away from me, and vice versa. So uh, frequency of a wave, that's the pitch we hear. So when we hear a lower pitch, it's a bigger wavelength, um, lower frequency. When we hear a higher pitch, it's a higher, um, higher frequency, lower wavelength. Loudness corresponds to the amplitude of the sound wave. So how loud or how soft the, so the sound is is the amplitude of the wave. So when we're yelling, we have a high amplitude wave, whereas when we're softer, we have a lower one. And a really high amplitude wave, like when you would get at a, when you're at a concert that's too loud, you're too close to the speaker, that's a lot of pressure or force, right? And that's why it can damage your eardrum and do permanent damage is because that's a large amount of force that your eardrum is experiencing, uh, which won't come back. Um, Recall that the speed of sound um, is frequency times wavelength, and it changes in its medium. So if you've ever gone underwater, like you're in the pool, they're like listening to music, and then you go underwater in the pool, and you can hear the same thing, but it sounds very different because the speed changes. So think if the speed changes, what does that mean, mean about the frequency and the wavelength of the wave that happens? So um, the Doppler effect. So let's look at how the Doppler effect occurs. So if you've ever had an ambulance speeding towards you, and that's what we see here, and it sounds like a good, it makes this sound like we hear this like pitch shift. So as the ambulance is coming towards us, it's making those waves, but it's making them every time it's making them, it's getting closer and closer. So what it does is it shrinks the wavelength. Like it makes it makes it's not making them from the same spot, right? So that squishes the wavelength because it's getting closer to you or makes the frequency higher. So as, as the ambulance is approaching you, it sounds like a higher pitch. As it passes you, you hear the true pitch, and then when it goes by, you're hearing the lowered pitch um, of the wave. So the Doppler effect is the idea that that sound, the frequency of light, is the same amount, is the same frequency. However, just per you're perceiving it differently because of motion, because of something moving at you then being next to you and then moving away from you. So as it moves away from you, that ambulance, that pitch sounds much lower. Okay, so we have a, our free response question here. Describe why the Doppler effect occurs. And use an example to help explain. So go ahead and pause and do that right now. Okay, so sound is created when an object vibrates or oscillates moving air molecules that move other air molecules until the waves reach your ear. It can also be created if air is forced through an opening. Um, so making sound could be a guitar or violin string. And think about that like a standing wave where the two ends are held taut. A drum head hitting the top of a drum, and that vibrates. A piano key, which in turn strikes a string in the piano. A woodwind, where that um, the reed that you use resonates and then is amplified by the instrument. And so standing waves are um, what is happening with all of these examples. All right, we'll be going into this in more detail in class, but here's your multiple choice question. So which of the following statements most accurately reflects the qualities of a sound wave? Please answer that question now to wrap up your topic six cycle two homework video.